Welcome to Little Big Book by Chance L. Landry, honoring Native American heritage. What is a powwow? Part 2. As the ripples of water spread when a stone is thrown into a pond, so too do the vibrations emanate from the beat of our sacred drum, bringing healing to all those within its reach. The drum is the heartbeat of the powwow, along with the singers that contribute their songs of blessing. It is the force that elevates the well-being of the people throughout the powwow. The powwow drum undergoes a blessing before any drumming commences, signifying its crucial and sacred role in the powwow. With the initial strike, the spirit of the drum emerges, forging a connection between the people and our Creator through the rhythmic heartbeat of Mother Earth. Drums command the utmost respect. While drummers beat the drum, they sing songs of prayer, warriors, honor, and healing. Typically crafted from cedar within hollowed logs, the drum are covered with hides sourced from buffalo, deer, or elk. The skin is meticulously wrapped hotly around the wood using sinew. The northern drum maintains a slower beat, while the southern drum beats slightly faster. There are basically two types of powwows. There is a traditional powwow which serves as ceremonies honoring groups or individuals with participating dancers receiving a symbolic honorarium. In contrast, contest powwows are competitive events where dancers have the opportunity to win prize money. In 1987, American Indian dance contests like Red Earth in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and the Gathering of Nations in 1983 in Albuquerque, New Mexico, emerged from ceremonial traditions contributing to the growth of intertribal powwows and cultural festivals. These competitions draw participants nationwide with prize incentives. Participants are grouped by age and style, judged on poise, stamina, and showmanship. Criteria include movement quality, clothing details, and rhythm, with judges moving around the arena to evaluate dancers' performances, each interpreting the song's story uniquely. The intricate world of men and women's regalia mirrors the essence of indigenous heritage. Each element of their regalia carries a story. Powwows are not exclusive to the young only. Men and women's golden age, ages 50 and older, are included. Men's traditional dancer. In his hands, the traditional dancer can carry a range of objects, usually a wing fan, pipe bag, and dance stick. The colors and the design of the dancer's regalia are personal. They can represent colors and designs of their tribe or immediate family that have been handed down through generations. The movements reenact that of a warrior searching for the enemy. The grass dance has ancient roots when tribal dance festivities required flattening the prairie grass. Legend tells of young boys selecting an ideal dance location, only to find the grass too tall. In their effort to create a suitable space, the distinctive grass dance originated. After stomping the grass, they incorporated it into their regalia. Today, ribbons symbolize the grass, gracefully swaying and mimicking the prairie grass in the wind. The creation of the straight dance is credited to various tribes, with the Ponca tribe believed to be its originator. Other tribes, including the Osage, Omaha, Pawnee, and Kiowa, have also contributed to its evolution. This dance symbolizes the bravery of warriors and the skill of hunters. Notably, the dancer avoids dancing backward, signifying a steadfast stance against retreating from the enemy. The gourd dance belongs to the Kiowa people. The tepeka, meaning skunkberry or brave, is used by the tribe instead of the term gourd dance. 
The song and the dance was given to the Kiowa warrior by the Red Wolf. The wolf instructed the Kiowa people to honor their warriors who fought along the way from the homeland of the Northern Plains to Oklahoma. This dance first appeared in a Sundance ceremony that was banned by the federal government in the late 19th century. Revived in 1946 and then again in 1955, where it brought tears to many elders who were still alive to remember the first revival, and the gourd dance was reborn. This is not a competition dance, so it is not judged. Taking photos is not allowed. The revered eagle holds a special place in the hearts of Native communities. Recognized as one of the most powerful and majestic winged creatures, its remarkable ability to soar into the sun without losing its sight, and its role as a watchful messenger of danger have contributed to its esteemed status. For some tribes, the eagle is seen as a conduit for prayers, delivering them to the Creator. This profound connection with the eagle inspires many tribes to celebrate its significance through a dance that artfully mirrors the raptor's majestic and symbolic movements. The hoop or ring serves as a healing tool for various tribal medicine healers. It holds sacred significance, symbolizing the circle of life, the four seasons, spring, fall, winter, and summer, the four winds, east, west, south, and north, and the four sacred plants, corn, squash, beans, and tobacco. The inception of the modern hoop dance is credited to Tony Whitecloud, a Jemez Pueblo man, who showcased it for the first time in the 1942 film Valley of the Sun. White Cloud innovatively used multiple hoops, initially 7 to 10, made from willow branches with a 24-inch diameter that would fit around his body. Today, advancements in materials allow hoop dancers to incorporate up to 28 hoops. In 1928, the Ponca tribe built their own powwow arena in White Eagle, Oklahoma. Gus McDonald the originator of the fancy war dance, became the first world champion of the dance that later swept through the southern plains. As of 2012, and because the family honor, Julep Farmer MacDonald, matriarch of the Ponca Presents the Fancy War Dance Champion each year. The fancy dance is usually performed by younger men and boys as it requires stamina and strength to perform. Today, it is performed everywhere in the USA. Most dances are given to dancers. Thousands of years ago, on a beautiful spring day, a young man sat and watched the courtship of the prairie grouse. Thinking he could learn the dance, he watched intently as he admired an appreciation of their movements. Knowing he respected and treasured their dance, the lesser chicken gave him the dance. The moment he was given the dance, the young man began mimicking the grouse. As they both continued in the sequence of steps together, he knew he had been given the celebration and grandeur of life, and the chicken dance was born. An Ojibwe man's granddaughter became sick. He went to bed very concerned for his granddaughter. Praying deeply, he finally fell asleep. As he slept, four women, who were guides, came to him. Each was wearing a jingle dress and dancing. He was told to follow their instruction, to bring healing to his granddaughter. The first guide began to pray while he was instructed on what to do. The second guide taught him how to make the special dress with jingle bells that would absorb the healing vibrations of the drum. The third guide taught him how his granddaughter should perform the dance. The fourth guide taught him the song that was to be sung to the heartbeat of the drum. He awoke with excitement. He did as he was instructed to do. His granddaughter put on the special dress, still weak, danced slowly. But as the jingle bells absorbed the healing from the drum, she began to dance faster until she was completely healed.
In the 1920s, the fancy men's dance gained popularity, inspiring women to join in with their own version, known as the Fancy Shaw Dance. Despite its creation in the 1920s, the ladies' fancy shaw didn't gain widespread popularity until the 1950s. This dance is sometimes referred to as the butterfly dance due to the resemblance to the graceful movements of the butterfly. The ladies' southern cloth dance, representing the southern plains, is a graceful counterpart to the men's southern straight dance, characterized by slow, elegant steps and a gentle dip to the drum beat. The dress inspired by Kiowa and Comanche camp dresses. The regalia is made of cloth, with a breastplate adorning both the back and the front, complemented by a purse, tobacco pouch, and a gracefully swung shawl, adding to the overall traditional and elegant appeal. Buckskin, one of the oldest Native American women's dances, is marked by elegance and grace. The ladies wear handcrafted buckskin dresses adorned with intricate bead designs. Northern dresses feature full beadwork on the shoulders, while southern ones accentuate with beadwork. The dresses vary by tribe, showcasing unique styles and jewelry, including breathtaking bone hair pipe breastplates, hair barrettes, beaded crowns, and moccasins added to the ornate attire. The dress, characterized by slow and poised movements, circling the drum and swaying fringed sleeves. The women carry a beaded purse and a folded shawl, contributing to the graceful effect. Northern dresses often boast fully beaded yokes, while southern dresses showcase applique beadwork. As we wrap up this week's journey into the vibrant world of Native American culture, I want to express my gratitude for joining me on this exploration. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell. Stay tuned for another insightful episode next week. Until then, take care, wishing you peace and knowledge on your journey.